The Jackson RR5 is one of the most elegant Rhodes Flying Vs out there. And this week we're taking a brand new one and turning it into a metal machine. Trash to thrash? This week it's more like beauty to badass and it's a tribute to someone very special to my customer. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every time we post a new video. This is Trash to Thrash. For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. This season, I'll be rebuilding guitars sent in by fans of the show. I'll be rebuilding 14 guitars over 14 weeks, each with a unique and interesting backstory. I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to make these things into the guitars of their dreams. This is Trash to Thrash. Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and this week we're gonna be taking a gorgeous Jackson RR5. It's a brand new Jackson Rhodes Flying V, and it is beautiful. We're gonna be taking it and stripping it down, sanding it down, and making it into a destructive metal monster. In 2021, my customer James came to me to build a custom Jackson Rhodes for him to be a tribute slash memorial to his late wife. She passed away from cancer in early 2021, and this is his way of honoring her. James plays all kinds of styles of rock and metal, but his favorite is extreme death metal. And let's just say that was not Gina's favorite. She loves when he plays guitar, just not that stuff. He says he can't help himself, he just loves brutal music. So today we're gonna be honoring her by building a custom Jackson Rhodes with a memorial to her on the guitar. Here's the guitar we're gonna be working on today. Look at this beauty. The Jackson RR5 features an alder body with neck through construction and a maple neck. It features the classic Rhodes body style with a set of Seymour Duncan JB pickups. It has a rosewood fretboard with the typical Jackson compound radius of 14 inch to 16 inch. It has 22 frets. It has pearloid shark fin inlays. And this one came decked out with gold hardware. You may be thinking that this guitar looks brand new and that's because it is. My customer James ordered it directly to me, so he hasn't even seen the guitar yet. I've always loved the RR5s, and I always wanted one in black and gold. So to tear this thing down and rebuild it is going to be a little weird. But what we're going to turn it into is something far more unique and far more metal. Here's the plan for this guitar. We're going to start by filling the neck pickup cavity. It's going to be a single humbucker in the bridge, and that's it. Then it's going to get some matte black paint. But that's not all. This is going to have a very special finish on it. Since this guitar is a tribute and a memorial to Gina, we're gonna add a vinyl with angel wings and her name. Then we'll seal that in with some matte clear coat. Now this thing's about to look real metal as we throw gloss black splatter on it. Next, we're gonna make some diamond plate pick guards, a tailpiece, and a matching truss rod cover. I told you this thing was about to get real metal, literally and figuratively. Then we're gonna wire it up with a single EMG81 in the bridge and no pots, no knobs, just a single on-off switch. It's either all or nothing with this one. But what do you do when all isn't enough? You crank it up with a preamp. So we're adding an EMG PA2 preamp for a 20 decibel boost, which will be controlled by another toggle switch. And of course, a black Iron Age kill switch with a red LED. Then we're gonna deck it out with some Goto hardware in Cosmo Black. Cosmo Black is kind of like a black nickel or a smoked black. This thing is gonna look unbelievable. If you approve of the design, hit that like button right now. Now, as always, I handed the guitar off to my assistant, Ryan, and he began to disassemble it. Before we hand it off to Ryan, I want to remind you guys, if you want to buy one of my custom guitars that I've built, I have a few available over at guitarguts.com. There's a link right at the top for guitars for sale. Click that and you'll see a few of them along with my Guitar Guts kill switch and my signature pedal. Another way to support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash is signing up to the Patreon page. For $10 a month, you can become a CEO member and be entered into the monthly giveaway, or you can simply just donate $3 a month to help the channel. Links to all this stuff is down below. The guitar is now in Ryan's possession, and let's take one more look at this beautiful guitar before we take it apart and completely change its look. Now Ryan will start disassembling the guitar by taking off the strings, removing the string ferrules, removing the tuners, then removing the pickguard and all the electronics, and before you know it, it's just a husk. It's now time to start sanding this guitar. So we're gonna use a palm sander with 600 grit sandpaper, sanding in a circular motion. When you sand in a circular motion, it creates the fastest, deepest cut. So that's gonna make this job just go by a little faster than going left and right or just in one direction. 
Of course, if you're going to do this at home, go outside. You don't want to make a mess. And of course, wear a dust mask. Now we're going to start working on one of the things that makes this guitar real custom. Filling the neck pickup cavity. And we do that by cutting a piece of hard wood. We're using a piece of red oak in this case. And we trace the pickup cavity and we're going to make this as close to possible as that pickup cavity. Then we're going to cut it out using a bandsaw. Bandsaws can be super dangerous, so you'll notice that we use another piece of wood to push our wood through, so we're not going to chop off a finger or two. I've heard some nasty stories about bandsaws. With that being said, it's also an amazing tool and it does things other saws can't do. As with any power tool or electric saw or anything dangerous like that, you're going to want to just use some precautions. Now our piece is looking good and we're going to glue it into the guitar body. Of course, there's going to be some extra space around the sides of it, so we're going to fill that in a minute. Then off camera, we smoothed it out so it's not just globbed on there and inserted it into the neck pickup cavity. Ryan did a great job on this one. It was actually a hard fit to get it in there. Then we real lightly just tap it down, make sure it's fully seated. Then we used a large C-clamp to hold the piece in the guitar overnight just to make sure it's not going to shift or lift at all. For the majority of the fill, we use Elmer's Wood Filler. It's a pretty good product. It dries fast, but it tends to dip a lot and it doesn't dry as hard as wood does in my experience. I've tried a lot of different products over the years like Bondo, Elmer's Wood Filler, and other products from other brands that I can't remember right now. But my favorite is probably Bondo. I always try other products, but then I come back to Bondo. Bondo seems to dry the hardest, it cures the fastest, and it sands the closest to wood. It doesn't consistently dip like other wood fillers, and it seems to be less fuss to me. If you have experience in this field, let me know down in the comments what you like to use to fill large cavities. Now sometimes it can be kind of hard to tell if you're exactly flat on a wood filling project like this. What I like to do is go and spray a coat of primer and then start sanding it and you can see how level it really is. When you have wood filler and paint all in the same area, it can kind of create an optical illusion and be hard to tell exactly how flat it is. Once it's all one color and it's uniform, I'll be able to see if it needs any more Bondo or any more filler. And I could see we did sand down into the wood and we're going to need some grain filler. So I'll pour some on there and just kind of run a card back and forth so it all fills in there and then wipe off everything I can. While I'm finishing up the neck pickup cavity and starting to paint it, Ryan's outside working on a brand new pick guard, tail piece, and truss rod cover out of diamond plating. We can see him clamping it down right here with the straight edge. This material is pretty thick so Ryan used an angle grinder to cut it. After cutting all the pieces, he brings it over to the belt sander and takes down the edges. That's pretty smooth now. The next step was to bring it to the drill press, drill some holes, and here we have the finished set. Now we have the three matching pieces, the exact same size as the originals. But we're not just going to leave them raw like this. We're going to paint them up. Now painting these was a little bit of an experiment for me. I had some extra pieces of diamond plate that I could test on. And I wasn't sure from the beginning if I was just going to use black paint and that's it. Or if I was going to clear coat it. And if I did clear coat it, was I going to sand and buff it like I do with the guitar finish? Or could I get away with just shooting some clear over it and getting it real nice and smooth? The texture of the diamond plating is going to make it real hard to sand and polish and buff that way. So if I can get away with not having to do that, that's what I'd like. I'd hate to go through all the work of prepping and painting these and then sand through an edge on the diamond plating. The black paint looked good, but it didn't lay down as flat and didn't look as glossy as I was hoping for. So I will hit it with some clear coat and hope for the best. Like I said, I'd like to get away with not having to level sand and buff it, but we'll see what happens. And it actually looked pretty good. But then there was a couple little dust nibs and some imperfections, so I sanded those spots level and then buffed them out. To buff these out, I mounted them onto a piece of wood. Obviously, you can't hold that with your fingers up to a buffer like this. So I mounted them to little pieces of wood that I can use as a handle so I could really get in there and get the sides and get the whole piece nice and polished. 
Man, those pick guards are turning out killer. I want to remind you guys to check out my gaming channel if you haven't already. If you guys are into 80s, 90s memorabilia and collectibles, Spider-Man, X-Men, Power Rangers, Pokemon, any of that stuff, go check out my retro gaming channel. I talk about all this stuff, and the link is down in the description below. All right, now let's head into the paint booth and start spraying this thing. first color going on this guitar will be flat black. You'll notice the entire neck is taped off because we're going to leave it raw. This one came with a maple raw neck, which is really nice, so no need to paint that. Now it's been about five days since the guitar's been painted, and I have my vinyls ready to be applied. I'll start up on the headstock with the Black Jackson logo over the flat black headstock. We get a little preview of what the headstock's going to look like because we put the truss rod cover on for placement of the headstock logo. After applying a lot of pressure, the top layer is ready to be removed, and the logo will stay behind. Now that looks sweet. The next decal is going to go on the body. It's a pair of angel wings that says Gina in the middle, and has her birth date and the date of her passing. Like with the headstock logo, on the body, I installed the tailpiece so we can tell exactly what the vinyl is going to look like with its placement and the things that are going to be around it on the top of the guitar. The last vinyl is going to go down here on the bottom of the guitar. You can see what it says. And I think it's something we can all agree with, right? Now it's back into the paint booth so we can apply some matte clear. For this guitar, I use Spray Max Flat Clear. I use their high gloss stuff all the time and I love it. And I've been wanting to try their flat clear. To seal in the vinyls and really give the guitar a nice top coat, I use an entire can on this guitar. Later in the day when the clear has dried, it's now time to throw on the splatter. I've seen a lot of different methods to apply splatter, like using a wet brush, but I like to pour it straight into a cup and just throw it on the guitar. Then I'll come back with a small brush, and I will flick it on there just to get some really small spatter. I get the question all the time, don't you mean splatter, don't you mean spatter? There's actually a technical definition between the two. In forensics, spatter is used to describe small particles. Splatter is used to describe large particle. All right, let's take a look at that splatter. I love the matte black with the gloss black look. I think that looks so cool. The black decals are subtle, which I like, so it all is just all black. Next began the task of wiring it up and assembling it. Typically, this is just a finishing lap for a guitar, throwing everything together, and there's no more real big surprises. You can encounter some small things needing to drill out holes, like here we had to drill out the post holes for the tunematic. It's not too complicated of a task, but if you don't center your drill bit right, you're going to make the hole oblong in one direction, so you want to make sure that you center it real good. Next we'll install these beautiful black Cosmo Goto locking tuners. The screw holes on the back of the headstock that mounted the original tuners didn't match with the Gotos, so I filled in the original ones and redrilled new ones. Now it's almost done and we just got to finish wiring it up. For me, this is one of the easiest parts because I've done a ton of wiring in my guitar career. But it was a little bit tricky because this setup is different than any other setup I've ever wired up, so I had to really think about it for a few minutes and plan it out because there's no volume pot. It's just going to be an on-off switch, so you get all or nothing. And then we're also going to be adding a 20 decibel preamp, so there'll be two toggle switches down there and a kill switch. And now it's time to button up the pick guard. My customer James wanted these GHS 1046 boomers, so that's what we're using to string it up. The last real step here is adjusting the truss rod, doing the final setup, and intonating the new GoTo bridge. This is one of the most important steps, and something unfortunately a lot of guitar players don't know how to do, so they buy new parts, a new bridge, they swap them out and then I'll see people's saddles straight across on their bridge. They're not intonating it. Meaning when you move up the fretboard, it'll start to lose tuning and chords won't make sense. They won't be in tune in different places on the neck. Before I show you the guitar, I want to tell you guys that this episode is sponsored by Iron Age Guitar. We've got an Iron Age kill switch on this guitar. I've got them on a ton of my guitars. Next month, I'm going to be doing a big giveaway over on my Patreon page. Last week, I told you guys I was going to be including a SoCal pedal boards. Alien Blood pedal board with LEDs under it. Well, this week we're going to add in an Iron Age kill switch and a custom Iron Age guitar gut signature guitar pick. 
So we're just adding to the pot. The next couple episodes, we're going to be adding more to the pot. So go sign up to the Patreon if you want to be a part of this giveaway and win the kill switch, the pedal board, and a bunch of other cool stuff that I'll be telling you about over the next couple episodes. Now, you want to see this guitar? Check this thing out. When the guitar came in, it was all class. It wasn't metal enough. I mean, let's be honest, it's beautiful. But for brutal death metal, I don't think so. Now this is more like it. Look at that red LED glowing. The contrast between the flat black and the gloss black is one of my favorite things, and with these black diamond plate pickguards, it accentuates it even more. The decals are subtle, but when you notice them, they're bold, and that's what I like about them. This guitar could be your daily player. It's not overly distracting, and it looks great. It's a mix of brutal and sensitive, and I think we nailed exactly what James was going for. What do you guys think of this beast? Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this guitar. This one's an interesting one because there's so much going on on it, yet it's all one color palette, so it all works together. I mean, look at the headstock, all blacked out like that, with the Cosmo black hardware, the black truss rod cover, the black logo and splatter. It's gorgeous. This thing is sick. Now, you guys want to hear how it sounds? Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. What'd you think of the guitar? Let me know down in the comments what you think of the final version of this guitar. I absolutely love the thing. I had a ton of fun working on it and playing it. I've always wanted an RR5. I wanted a traditional one like how this guitar started, but I would love to have the final version of this guitar. This thing is a beast. If you want to send your guitar into me, brand new one or used old beat up one, Hit me up, mark at guitarguts.com. We could talk about mods and things we can do to the guitar, and I'll help you create your dream guitar. Again, if you want to buy one of my creations, go to guitarguts.com. There's a link at the top for guitars for sale. Click that, and you'll see a few guitars that are finished, ready to ship today. Thanks again to my sponsor, Iron Age Accessories. Check them out. They make awesome kill switches, some with LEDs that require batteries, some that don't. They're a really fun accessory that looks really cool on the guitar. And I have them on like most of my guitars. I love these things. Iron Age makes my favorite kill switches and they even make the Guitar Guts signature kill switch. A special thanks to James for sending the guitar in and to Gina, rest in peace. I think most of us have had a family member or someone we know affected by cancer. I have and it's a horrible disease. So I hope we've done you justice with this memorial piece. I'm proud of it. I think it's a badass guitar and I can't wait to see the look on James face when he gets it. And again, go check out my retro gaming channel. The links to all this stuff is down in the description below. I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the patrons out there. Go sign up to the Patreon if you haven't already. The links, you guessed it, they're down there. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next week. Rock on, my friends. Okay, I know I said that was the end of the episode, but I have one more little test for you guys. I told you guys I installed an EMG PA2 preamp in the guitar. 
But what exactly does the PA2 preamp do? I get a lot of questions about these and I love these things. So as a little experiment to show you how much more sustain and how much more gain you get by using one of these preamps, I've done an AB test, hitting an E5 chord with and without the preamp on. Then I overlaid the two clips and you could hear the difference in strength on one speaker versus the other. So one side of the speakers you're gonna be able to tell sounds a lot weaker and that's because there's no preamp on. Here we go. You can hear the side that has the preamp on is still ringing out strong. The other side is pretty much done already. I'll even mute the powered side and you can hear how weak the signal sounds on the non-powered side. It's somewhat similar to a Sustainiac pickup. All right, this time for real. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week.